the Lord's promised to us that everything that we need is in the room. You got to make sure what room you're talking about, though. But the Lord is indeed, as Pastor Jamie said, the Lord is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we ask or think. Some of us are already blessed. All of us are blessed, but some of us just don't know it yet. I celebrate the Honorable Costello Williams, who's celebrating a day of life, her birthday. I know she's thankful. I celebrated James Lewis, who celebrated his on Friday. I know he's thankful. And I think they would tell you, along with many others, such as Dr. Hicks, who received her, her new degree, I know she'll say, God is, the God is worthy. I know that Amon Award would tell you that God has been faithful and his mother has been there supporting his rock. And I know he'll tell you that everything you need is in the room. I wonder how many others can tell others around you that God is in the room because I know that without him, I wouldn't be as blessed as I am. Somebody ought to say so. Somebody ought to say so. If you know you're blessed, you ought to say so. If you know you're blessed, you ought to say so. If you have come over the hills and over mountains, you ought to say so. If you have made it through the valley, you ought to say so. If you beat the odds, you ought to say so. If it didn't kill you, you ought to say so. If you found new purpose, you ought to say so. That the Lord is good and his mercy is everlasting. If you've been tried and came to the fire like pure gold, you ought to say so. If you've been up, if you've been down, almost leveled to the ground, but the Lord lifted your head, you ought to say so. I dare you to shout one time, I've been through too much to turn around now. Mm. I need some of our seasoned saints who want to say with me, I need some of our senior saints who want to just join me and say, I once was young, but now I'm old. But I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor their seed begging bread. Can I just hear a, a praise of my seniors this morning? That you are great for the Lord brought you a mighty long way. Can I hear, can I, can I hear from some of our young adults? Can I hear from our young adults? You, your future is bright because God is in your future, because God is in your presence. Can I just get y'all to just shout with me one time? Just get a praise from the thankful people in the house. Amen. 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 And amen. We'll be seated if we can. Mm. 
We honor God again for his spirit that permits us in the midst of our own imperfections to stand before a perfect holy God with the ability, the gifts that he's given to us to declare his word, to sing, to pray, to stand in the doors, to usher others into the atmosphere environment of a holy God who loves us dearly. A God who's willing to come into the room. We thank God for you, the miracles, the epistles. We thank God for you, all of, all of the accolades thrust upon you and the accomplishments. We thank God for you, for the lessons you've learned through your pain. We thank God for you. for that resilience that came because of God's presence in your life. We honor him that you didn't give up too long. You got back in the game and you started to live because you read the word, I shall live and not die. We honor God for you. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. Thank you. We want to God again and continue to pray for those in 75-7 and at the error codes changed to some will be 804. Um, but we want you to know that our prayers continue to go up for uh, our communities and not only our prayers, we must find our place in community and make our impression on community to put our fingerprints on the things that need to be shaped, reshaped, redesigned, or even designed. If the door is not there, then God gives you the creative power to make a door, to create a door through his Holy Spirit. If it does not have the windows that are necessary for God to pour a blessing into your life, I want you to know that God has already orchestrated the builder to come and construct exactly what you need to pour into your life. And he will do just that. You are his walking, talking, breathing, living miracle. You are his heir to the promise. And you are indeed, no matter what your resume looks like, no matter what your resume looks like, you are indeed the offspring of God. You are that miracle. You are the person that Jesus has died for. And we celebrate your life. We celebrate you and all that he has done. Let me, let me just try to move forward and, and just shake this sermon into place. Galatians chapter 6. This particular sermon, I was hoping that Ashley will keep on singing and the choir will keep on singing. This is a sermon that many folks just won't like. It's, it's a sermon that will be boring. To some of you, this sermon will be boring. I'm letting you know right now. You can take a nap. But I want you to share with me in Galatians 6. I've been in church all my life, but for the last perhaps 40 years of my life, I have been committed to God and growth as a Christian. And I've had some ups and some downs, some bruises and some turnarounds. But the one constant person has always been God. And God has blessed me to have people who restored me, who helped me while going through crisis. God put people around in my life who helped me to be restored within. And I will always remember that at any given time, that road could flip. One day you could be the restorer, and one day you need to be restored. You must understand how to walk both ways. I want to share this particular sermon today because it has been my experience that this particular text is one that not many Christians accept or dare to walk in. 
This has proven to be very difficult for us as believers in verses one through five. And I wanna share with you today because I believe that it's not just how we look on social media. And I'm so thankful that many of you are embracing your new look and you are coming into a place that you are comfortable with your own body. But please understand that you are more than hips, lips, and fingertips. And I understand social media, but understand all your friends aren't looking at you because they care about you. They just like your display. As believers, watch what you display. Oftentimes it might give others the wrong impression of what you're seeking. You might just be seeking a person who doesn't work, but will make love to you anytime you want it. If that's what you want, you go get it. But please don't complain later when the person refused to get out of bed because you met them that way. For some reason, we have forgotten that being a woman also means that you could be a lady. Being a, a man, a male, means that you can also be a gentleman. You ain't got to thug it out and cuss it out and tell folk to do this and fall on this and sit on that. I know I'm talking to the church. I'm talking to y'all. I'm talking to the wrong crowd. I know y'all real safe folk. But I just want you to be careful. Be careful with what you put on your hook because you will catch exactly what you are fishing for. This sermon is one that is challenging, it's difficult, because it's just not happening on a scale that needs to happen in the church. Walk with me, if you will, um, through these verses. Galatians 6, verses one through five. The message translation, it says, live creatively, friends. If someone falls into sin, forgivingly restore them. Saving your critical comments or analysis for yourself. You might be needing forgiveness before the day's out. Stoop down and reach out to those who are oppressed. Share their burdens and so complete Christ's law. If you think you are too good for that, you are badly deceived. Make a careful exploration of who you are and the work you have been given and then sink yourself into that. Don't be so impressed with yourself. Don't compare yourself with others. Each of you must take responsibility for doing the creative best you can with your own life. I want to talk for a few moments, leave no man behind. You may take your seats. The word man simply is generic for the human one. I want to share this particular scripture with you. As I said, that many of you might fall asleep or even not appreciate the tone or attitude of this particular sermon. But God is not just concerned with your tongue speaking, Bible toting, cross wearing, church going life. But he's also concerned about your character, your attitude, your response, your reaction to the events of life, but especially the people in your life. It is important that we learn to cultivate a meaningful relationship with God vertically and horizontally. It means that we must understand that God has not made any of us the same. All of us are distinctly different, and for that we give him praise. But you must learn how to cultivate this relationship with God 
by cultivating your relationship with one another, learning how to be civil, learning how to show respect, learning how to demonstrate the attitude of Christ even in the moments of hostility and betrayal. And Jesus says to us, if you have done it to the least of my people, the marginalized, the oppressed, the poor, the widow, if you have done it to the least of my people, you've also done it unto me. Thus Jesus very carefully lays out the whole paradigm of how we are to love. Love is vertical with God, but love is also horizontal. And what Jesus says in that verse, that if you've done it to the least of my people, if you've done it on a horizontal level, you've also done it to me. Our vertical expression of love must be displayed, demonstrated on a level where we meet people where they are, where we must give them space and room to grow, to flourish, to make mistakes, to be forgiven and be restored. We must find a place not only, not only in the kingdom of God, but also in the local assembly where we are no longer judging people by our own marred standards. That we find the grace and mercy that God himself displays with us. It is in the context of this particular scripture that we must understand that throughout the word of, word of God, God admonishes us, even in John 15, 12, God admonishes us to love one another. We are admonished in Galatians chapter 5, verse 13, to forgive one another. We are admonished in 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 11, then to encourage one another when we are weak and can find hope. These are commandments. These are, these are the things in which model the Christian life. It is our example to the world that we have come out of the world of judgment and condemnation to a place of reconciliation and hope. What would our churches look like if people had the attitude of compassion and patience with one another? But this is not often seen even in the church itself. We love to praise and we love to worship, we love to shout. But I say to you round that our worship and our praise is really sounding brass and tinkling cymbal if we cannot love and embrace the other. You may not even clap, you may fall asleep. I gave you permission earlier to go to sleep because this may not be for you because you have no desire to change your life of gossip. You have no desire to change your mundane life of making others miserable simply to have them join you. Maybe this sermon isn't for you because you think more of yourself than even God has created you to be, thus setting yourself up on a pedestal and others can't reach you because you're looking down at them through your nose. But while you're looking down at us through your nose, we're looking up through your nose and we see all the filth and foreign matter that you are trying to hide. Y'all are going to help me today. I'm, I'm, going, I'm struggling with this today. It is, it is in this way we are admonished to care for one another. We were never brought into this world to be islands by ourselves. God created us, and then God said, it's not good that they be alone. They need some help. Here in God's context in Genesis, we find that God puts Adam to sleep and says, Adam, I no longer need your help because what I am about to create is something beyond your measure. Here we must understand that when Ecclesiastes speaks of two and three, it says two are better than one because when one falls, the other who is now the encourager or the one who is restoring can help the fallen one get back on their feet. Where have we gone and what has happened to the church that when people are wounded, we no longer restore them, but we shoot them and embarrass them and shame them in order to make ourselves look better. 
I submit to you on this Sunday morning that if you need others to fall for you to look better, then you are small already. I, I told you, I know it wouldn't get many amen, but it's all right this morning because we have not, we have not been purposed to be alone. The body of Christ consists of more than just you or me. It consists of many different people with many different expressions of love and life. But we must understand that God wants us to have the attitude that he has for one another. When, when it is, is it acceptable to break someone because you don't like them? When is it ever acceptable to be called a believer, a Christian, but yet you speak in tongues but won't even say hello because you are jealous of their hairstyle, their nails, their hips, or even their lips? Where, 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 where do we fall from that we can celebrate each other because the other is climbing a little high, higher or faster than we are, but yet we sit in our churches and act as though we are that holy? Perhaps it's not H O L. Why? But it, perhaps it is W-H. Because we must find ourselves in a place where God says, I, I don't just want you H-O, but I want you holy. I want you whole. I want you to understand who you are in my life and who I am in your life. Jesus leaves with us two commandments. No longer do we need ten because the two he leaves with us really captures the ten of the Old Testament. So you don't really have to quote all 10, just quote two, and you hang all the other commandments on these two. The first one is love your God with all your heart, your mind, and your soul. And the second is likewise, love your neighbor as you love yourself. But how can I love my neighbor when I have not yet learned an appreciation for all the hiccups in my past that marred my perspective of who I am becoming? Because understand this, your vertical line alignment with God, your vertical love with God is also based on how you horizontally embrace each other. Again, it is not just I'm praising God, but I can treat you any kind of way I want to. That is not righteous, it is not sanctified, it is not holy, it is not where God wants us, that the church has measured people based upon their dress, based upon what they drink, based upon where they live, based upon how they smile. And we have failed in some areas miserably because we have made some people feel inferior because of how we act. Y'all gotta help me. I'm not saying you're gonna act like you're a fool or crazy, but you gotta act human. Sometimes in the old covenant, we heard people say this you are so heavenly minded that you're no earthly good. We don't mind saved, sanctified people, but don't act like you wrote the whole Bible. Y'all ain't gotta say nothing. I'm gonna preach this anyway. You ain't gotta say a word today. Because understand that God says that any given day, the script will flip. That one day you are the restored and on your feet. The next day you are in need of restoration. There are moments when you are on top of the world and then there are other moments when the world is on top of you. And as believers, we must learn how to be steadfast unmovable and always abounding in the work of the Lord. The last time I checked, church, it was God who blessed you. It was God who gifted you. It was God who gave you that talent. It was God who opened the door. It was God who closed the door. It was God who woke you up in the morning. And if we say and give God that level of glory and credit, then why do you quit ministry when someone irritates you but never gave you your giftedness? 
it's easy to walk away because of how people treat you. But the last time I checked, the Bible also tells us, be not weary in well-doing, for in due season you shall reap if you faint not. Uh, do you know how many times I just quit pastoring and wanted to quit preaching and wanted to quit all of the responsibilities I had? Many times I quit, but I rehired myself the next morning. God doesn't mind us quitting a temporary quit, but God said, you can't resign from something I called you to. You can't quit on me because somebody got under your skin and they hurt your hangnail. You, you can't rob me of what I put in your life because you upset and you are now dismissing their anointing because you don't like them anymore. Even if you don't like them, you can never negate their anointing. Even if you talk about them, you can never persuade God not to use them. Yeah, I don't know who I'm talking to. Y'all, y'all, y'all just help me out. I'm trying to get through this word today. It is, it is, it is, it is, it is one moment you're up and you're down, and you understand that it's okay because God needs God needs other people. God organized, God, God orchestrated us in a way that we need one another. When two, as Ecclesiastes, when two are together, one can warm the other. But pity the person when they're by themselves and no one to warm them. Then it says, if one falls, the other can help them up. Then it gets real, it gets real special. It says a three-court strand is not easily broken. So the enemy really wants you to get by yourself and feel as though nobody is doing this but you. I call this the Elijah spirit. The prophet Elijah gets to a place where, God, I'm tired. Jezebel is after me and she threatened to kill my life by this time tomorrow morning. I mean, people will hurl threats at you. But if you know God is your protector, Elijah runs and said, God, I've had enough. And maybe you're at a point where you've had enough, but God says you are never by yourself. Elijah said, God, I'm the only one left. God said, you a liar. You a liar, Elijah. I got a thousand prophets who have not bailed or bowed down to Baal. You are not, tell your neighbor, you are not by yourself. Neighbor, you, are not, you, you are not by yourself. Somebody has been appointed to you. Somebody has been assigned to you. Somebody is your keeper, your brother, your sister. So when you fall, they'll help you get back on your feet and get back in. They'll keep the wolves away while you're healing. They'll keep the vultures away while you're going through your wounded process and say, touch them not because they're vulnerable and you need people in your life who will protect you from vultures. Yeah, yeah I'm sorry, I'm, I'm coming. Y'all, y'all, y'all help me. Um, this word of God lets us know uh, that, 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 that moments of your life, you can't, you can't always be a receiver. You can't always, you can't constantly be weak. I meet so many people and they're always going through. I'm like, when are you gonna ever get through some? I'm going, every time I see you, I'm going through something. Oh, I've been doggone. Can I tell you what I'm going through? I can't tell you what I'm going through because you're always telling me what you're going through. Shucks. Can I get a word? Can I get a word in? Can I vent to you a little bit? I've been restoring you. I've been depositing you. It's your turn to give back. You leech. Sucking me bone dry. I'm sorry. I'm a, I'm a gentleman. You can't always be weak, feeding, 
feeding from others, but never depositing in the lives of others. Too often we see so many people as a victim, but never as a victor. So God wants us to change how we handle our horizontal relationships by being authentic in our virtue one. Because God understands that if you aren't real with me, you will never be real with them. That's why you keep attracting people you don't want because you keep giving off stuff you don't know you're giving off. We find, we find these words to be true. Bible talks to us that if you see a brother or sister who falls into sin, don't embarrass them or shame them. Don't, don't get on the phone and play your self-righteous role. You know how church folk get, y'all know how church folk get. They find out some news about you and they gonna call their prayer warriors. Hey girl, hey, I need you to pray. We're going we to go into battle. So and so, yeah, I knew they weren't all that saved, but we're going to pray for them anyway. Um, yeah, yeah, we're going to, yeah, 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 girl, yeah, girl, I knew it too, girl. I knew it. I was just waiting. I was just waiting, girl, and here it is. But we're going to pray and we're going to intercede for them and we're going to plead the blood of Jesus. Oh, shut up! You ain't really helping. All you are doing is spreading gossip. If you really wanted to pray, you would call them and say, can I meet you at a certain hour to touch and agree with you, to pray that God would restore you. You big mouth. Mm. Shot, don't get the shot, don't get that shot, don't get that one, don't get that. Mm -mm -mm -mm. We cause more hurt because we aren't held accountable. We aren't taught, we're taught about blessings and blessed in the city and blessed in the field. But what about discipline, Christian discipline? So we won't keep injuring people who've already been injured. This should be a safe place. I'm not coming here and you talking about how short my dress is or how tight my pants. Maybe that's all I got right now. I ain't got nothing else today because everything I got is in the cleaners. I'm not saying that everything is appropriate because some things that we do aren't always appropriate. We should do better as believers. We could do better in some of our dress. You, you ain't, you ain't got to be up here doing all this stuff with everybody seeing your butt. No, I ain't come to. <clears throat> uh oh, okay. I'm going to leave that alone. No, some things just not, you know. Probably. I'm almost done, Donald. <laughs> let's, let's get to our text. If someone falls into sin, if someone falls into temptation, that means it wasn't premeditated. It wasn't, you know, I'm going about and something happened and I just wasn't on guard and I fall into it. You who are spiritual, restore. It does not say condemn. Because Matthew's gospel says this, judge not that you may not be judged. Whatever judgment you use on others, God will also use it on you. Oh, come on somebody. And we must understand now that this is a level of what God says to us, that we must come to a place of understanding that if I use this on you, God's gonna turn it right around and say, because you use that measuring tool on them, I'm gonna use the same one on you. I had more grace for you, but because you didn't give what I gave you, I'm gonna shorten your grace and your mercy and not give you as much as I planned for you to have. We just can't do anything in the church anymore. We can't treat people indifferently because we don't understand them. 
The local assembly must be a place of love and forgiveness and restoration and accountability and discipline and hope and joy. But you who are spiritual, it says, restore them. Not shaming them, but correcting them in order to restore them. Not putting their business in the street. I remember when I first started preaching, uh, I went to this rural church and small church, and that Sunday morning, they actually brought a young teenage girl who got pregnant in front of the church, and they made her confess and say and apologize to the church like, 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 like the baby does. First of all, first of all, that's never what God said. You brought a young girl in front who's already dealing with the pain of being pregnant, already dealing with the gossip that church folk are talking about, and you're going to bring her in front of the people who really don't care because they would have stopped if they really cared to make her confess her sin. First of all, understand this principle. If the sin didn't happen with, with you in it, Ain't none of your business. <laughs> see how quiet it got? See how, see how quiet it got? No, if, if, it, if it's a public sin, which means she did it in front of public, right here in front of everybody, then she owe all of us an apology. But if she was at your house, I'm sorry, can I just, can I be real today? Can I be real? See, 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 I'm not saying that my son didn't do what I tried to do, but I watched, I knew, I knew me. So I knew that when I was a teenager, I tried to sneak girls in my bedroom. And one day my mama saw me, Magdalene, Magdalene, my mama said, boy, if you don't get her and you out, that's how I'm gonna kill both of y'all. So, so my sons tried to pull the same trick on me. They just didn't think, I know. I done been around the block a few times. I was born at night, but not last night. I know the game. I, I, I know when you're all nice and quiet. I, I know the game. And so be careful who you allow in your son's or daughter's bedroom. That, that ain't, we ain't, that ain't us, not, not, not the old school us, that ain't the old school us, that ain't us. No, that, that, ain't, that ain't us, that ain't us old black folk, no. We ain't used to that now, we ain't, we ain't never been like that. Maybe some of y'all young, younger folk, we ain't, in my generation, we ain't, no, you ain't, you ain't going for that. I'm sorry. Donald, and, and <laughs> let, me, let me just go through this word. If someone falls into sin, listen, forgivingly restore them, saving your critical comments for yourself. I, mean, I know you'd be, you be wanting to say, I told you so, but just don't say it. Just don't. No, no, because I told you so doesn't help them to be restored. It only further makes them feel guilty and ashamed of what you are attempting to restore them in. Then it says to us that because our job is to restore them and we all are ministers of reconciliation, how can we make things better for people? God just didn't save you to take you to heaven. You would have been gone by now. He saved you in order for you to be a positive, effective part of the body of Christ Jesus. Loving each other and saying to them, you know, um, I don't know how you feel about this, but I want to help you. Embracing people, letting them know that you too have some faults and you too have been where they are and someone restored you and you aren't there to embarrass them. And then it says unto us, you got to follow this word because your main job is to cover them. I want to cover them so they won't keep actively engaging in what they fell into. I want to cover them again so the vultures won't come and devour them in their moments of vulnerability and weakness. And then after you cover them, you've got to check yourself. Look at verses 2 and 3. Verse 2 and 3 says, says to share their burdens and complete and so complete Christ's law. If you think you are too good for that, you are badly deceived. Because the flip, the script will flip. Keep on living. You may not fall into sin like that, but you're going to have a burden. 
And the Bible then is two things. It says, restore those who have fallen. And then number two, it says, help those who have a burden. You can't assume and take the burden completely, but you can help them bear the burden like Jesus at the cross. When Jesus Christ was carrying a cross after he's been beat, a black man named Simon of Serene comes in and carries a cross for Jesus, but it's not his cross. He eventually has to give Christ his cross back in order for Christ to hang on it. So you can help people, but not assume their responsibility. I'm here to help you today. I'm here to help you. I'm here, I'm here to help you pay your month's rent today. I'm here to help you pay your next month's rent. I'm here to help you pay your third month's rent. But by the time it get to month nine and you ain't doing no better, we better seek a different opportunity. So I want to share with you, and I'm closing. Stoop down. You know what the word stoop, stoop means? It says stoop down. Stoop down means change your position. Do not think you're so good or elevated, even as a pastor, that you cannot pick up a chair. Now, they ain't gonna never be me. I, I know, I know pastors, they white folk hair. I, I've seen pastors, I like it though. Y'all, y'all, gee, why, why you don't wipe my head, man? You don't wipe my head. I be sweating him, be wiping my head. Be... You know why I don't do it? I just don't, that's just, that's, just, that's just not me. That ain't me. I don't need someone, it's nice. Come on, y'all know it's nice. It's nice that someone just come wipe your head. But I'm, I'm, I'm just, it ain't me, it ain't me. I'm from Bowers Hill. I can wipe my own head. I don't need, a, I don't need another man. Shelly, Shelly, Shelly can do it. She can wipe my head any time. My point is, even if people honor you, don't think that you are above. Stoop down means to change your posture, your position. Stoop down because you are reaching down to pull them up, not to step on them or choke them while they're down. You are reaching down, stooping down. You're willing to be inconvenienced to help them find new life. I've been here too long, I need to coat. Then it says to us, and I'm, I'm, I'm coming. It says share their burdens, which is another part of it, share their burdens. If someone needs help, help them as long as you can without becoming their enabler. Come on, Donald, help them. But without, you know, and when you become their enabler, what they do is, I don't have to try as hard because you're gonna always be there to feed me. So you're 18, you're 28, and you're still having people feed you because you've been conditioned to always ask for stuff you could be working for. I, I told you y'all won't like this sermon today. I told you it's boring. But then it says, if you think you are too good for that, if you're too good to help a homeless person, you know, if you, ain't, if you don't have money, just say, just, just say, I don't have any money. Get a job! I mean, you know, I mean, do you know, I mean, why even say, do you know, do you know what they've been to? Some, most of them, some of them have PTSD. They got some issues that came out of some hurt. So if you don't want to give to the homeless person, just don't give it, but don't further embarrass them. You believer, we are the light of the world, the salt of the earth. And if we don't get it right, who will? Make a careful exploration of who you are and work, I love this, work and the work you have been given, then sink yourself into that work. Don't be impressed with yourself. There's nothing wrong to love yourself and, and to know that today you, you look great. That's cool, say it. But don't start comparing yourself with others. I look better than she looks today. Well, that's today. That's today. 
That wig tomorrow may not look that great on you. That nail might just break. They're not your nails. I'm not better than any of y'all. I'm not better because I'm a preacher, pastor. I'm not better. Some days I feel I'm worse. I'm not better than you. I have a level of anointing, and you have an anointing, but I'm not better than you are. And you're not better than I am. We all are hiccups. I know you don't want to say it, but you ought to praise God that you know that you're a hiccup, but he still loves you. Don't compare yourself with others. I'm better because I have this. No. And your payment is just higher. I got a Hyundai, but it's paid off. You got, you, 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 you got a Lexus with bald tires. You're not better than me. I'm not better than you. But together we are strong. I'm going to stop right there. Together, we are stronger. So can we be more polite? I'm not saying that people can't be held accountable because they should. There are consequences to our actions. You aren't, you aren't there to handle the consequences. You are there to find out what do you need to get started again. That's why you're there. How can I help you? To restart after you've been wounded and bruised and hurt I don't want to hurt you anymore I don't want to hurt you any more than you've been hurt already you've been through enough already I want to be something or someone that's positive in your life someone who says you can make it you're a time mix you can take a licking and keep on ticking. It's got to know that. Y'all you, 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 <laughs> young folk don't know that one. That's fresh. <laughs> young sisters, get with some of our older sisters who embrace you and not judge you. Young, 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 young men, get with some older men who've been through the fire and been through hell and they could tell you, listen, this might be some good advice for you, some wisdom. That's all I'm saying to you today. Leave no brother or sister behind when you can help them get back on their feet. And the whole church said, I'm glad he finished.